you mentioned that struggle before the big ticket. You know, I know y'all were probably like 15 C before that, if I remember right. And yeah. going in and, and having having that win and building that morale up to the point when you got into like playoff play, y'all y'all were like ready to dominate. Like walk us through that whole spiel. Yeah, I think the crazy thing about me, like I didn't have a ton of comp, uh, a ton of comp like experience going into the league. Like I did, but not like as much as these guys. So like I was like kind of like the punching bag. So like it would be small mistakes I would make, and then you know I would hear it from Goofy. Like, if you know Goofy, you know like. You mess up, he's gonna get on you. Like that's just right. that's just who he is. I mean, and it was fine, but like I knew off the court, we can, if we we got into it, we could chop it up like men, and I can talk to these guys, and they can come to me about any issues they're having, like whether it's on a game or in life. And I think that kind of like helped everybody buy into uh, the on court uh, communication because we knew that we all had, we all had each other's back. Like we'll fight for each other at the end of the day, and like and that's what make champions. And um, so once we we once we like got rolling, once the ball got rolling, it's kind of like we knew what everybody's gonna do before the play even happened. So we're like, the game would just slow all the way down with us, especially mm-hmm. like against the Heat uh, in that championship series. Like Nate probably watched more film than anybody I've ever seen ever. He studied the way Hot Shot played for like the entire week. We didn't even play one scrim the entire week. We just watched film. And Nate was Man. constantly watching film. And, like, so the game game one, we were just moving. We went – we were even barely talking in the comms. We were just moving. To, like, we just knew what to do. Yeah. And then the second game, we got that rough start because Puda was in the box. Mm-hmm. But, but, like, we already knew that once we ran our – like, once we started doing the switch where I started setting the screen on the, the point guard to get him off of, the, the offense would open up from there. And that's when I started hitting threes because – we just started running like plays off of that, so it, like everything everything ran on its own. We were like a machine at that point. And and just for like people that are like have the aspirations of trying to be in a two K league, man, tell tell them like you know you mentioned watching those films and stuff like that, man. And I'm 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 co- I'm actually a coach of a high school esports team, and you know I, I bring in like basketball coaches to kind of run through formats and basic skills, man. Like tell them how important are uh, the schedule. Uh, what was the schedule like uh, when y'all practiced, like, as far as, like, a week, like, in one week? What, what did that look like? Um, for the week, it was pretty open from, like, Monday to Friday. Uh, season one, all the games on the weekend. So um, we would mm-hmm. come in at 10, 10, 30, and we had content, stuff to do, usually with the network because we had, like, our own little, like, show in MSG. And we had, like, other mm-hmm. stuff to do for, like, our, uh, our our sponsors and stuff. So that would be from, like, 10, 30 to, like, noon. Um, then we'll like watch film or like get something to eat at, um, between noon and one, usually get something to eat. And then we'll start to like, experiment from like one to three thirty four, and, uh, or we'll watch film last to about five thirty and six. And, or we, or we just like hang out. And then after that, we can go out and get something to eat together. If the company we're going to take it somewhere or we'll go back to the apartment to hang out. But we had to make sure we were in at 10, 10 30. I try to get there at least 20 minutes early. So I could like um, like look at some film from the prior games, or like get some try to look at some film on the guys we're gonna play up next, so, so I can see some stuff to bring into the actual team film session to bring in some insight early, or like let people know like what to pay attention to. Um, but we had a pretty strict uh, strict uh, schedule throughout the season. And so like you know. You mentioned, like, your marketing background, man. Were you able to implement some of that once you got to the Knicks, man? Like, were you able to kind of get, get with their team, per se, and kind of, you know, be able to trot out some things uh, due to your prior experiences? Yeah, well, like, well, my marketing background was more like a sales, like on the sales end of things. Mm-hmm. But um, I was still kind of oblivious to how esports was really ran because, like, like when I was growing up, my mom always told me to get out the game. Like, like that's how I was. That's, how, that's how I grew up. You're not the only one. <laughs> so, like, like, yeah. Yeah. For real, like, it was the homework and then go outside and do something until the lights were coming on. So, like, I, I didn't know a ton about, I didn't know a ton about, like, how esports was really ran until I started watching Fortnite and started watching how these, like, uh, guys from FaZe are promoting themselves and, and like, how Adam, uh, even, like, how Kudos are promoting himself and the way he did things. So, the whole content thing of, um, uh, Esports, I was really oblivious to until I, I got into the 2K League. But with the actual Knicks, it was more of them teaching me, like, uh, 
what happens behind um, the team. So like what happens on on like on Twitter, how they like sh- do photo shoots and how they have like content day and what sponsors want from uh, the organization and what um, like the business side of things. So it was pretty much a lot of me learning everything in terms of like what an NBA organization does in terms of like marketing mm-hmm. their team and what like esports do with uh like clg is like the they do the league of legends that's like the the knicks own yeah. clg so like i to learn about that a little bit so it was mainly i just got my eyes open up to like this whole world of content and marketing that i knew nothing about yeah i can only imagine man and, and you know being being in a market like that man what what was that like you know you know you're talking about you know the biggest you know metropolitan area that we have in the country man and you know everybody from here to to China to here to Japan, man. All eyes is on New York. What was that like? Um, it was definitely kind of a culture shock because I come from like Milwaukee and like uh, and I live in Indianapolis now. It's so mm-hmm. everything is so like you see grass like <laughs> like a mile is a mile in Indianapolis. Like I can get it a mile in, within a couple minutes. Like in New York, a mile it takes you thirty minutes to get there like a mile from where you're at. So there's so much people. It's like everything is out of convenience. Whatever I needed was within like a few hundred feet. And like uh, I met different types of people. Like the people are a lot different. They're, like they're more aggressive and because they're really focused on what they need to do. It's so much hustle and bustle. But like once you actually yeah. talk to these people, they have like the same problems that you have. So like it's, they're actually pretty cool. And they have this like this kind of stigma that they're like, cocky and like aggressive and mean and but like once i actually like got to chop it up with these guys like that lived in in these areas um they're actually mad cool so i i, I love being in new york i kind of miss it to be honest <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, it's, it's one of those places definitely man and so what um as far as like gameplay man like you know what what, what was your favorite 2k and like what what console do you play on um my favorite 2K, I would say, of all time in terms of, like, Pro-Am and parking and everything is, I would say, 2K17 because it was a lot more – it was even. Like, every mm-hmm. every archetype you made, like, you was really good at archetype. And, like, the, the Pro-Am games, there was no nothing, like, cheesy about 2K17. Like, everybody had their own purpose. And, like, it just made the game more fun. It was more competitive. Um, I mainly play on PS4. Um, but, like, if I had to pick a mm-hmm. – uh, actual game year probably two K seventeen and then probably follow up by nineteen. Man, me and you just got uh closer, man. I'm PS four here, man. You know yeah. I, it's it's it's, cra- it's crazy, man, because I, I, I see the lead is kinda balanced, man, because of, so, a lot of the guys play Xbox for sure. Uh, but you know, a lot of play yeah. play uh PlayStation as well, man. And I think that's cool too. And uh being able to uh you know, have that, that versatility, man. I don't know if you've been paying attention to the league, but like even like the three the three three v three uh brackets that they're doing now, man, they they chose to do it on both of the councils. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh to have that format, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. So what so uh as far as that, like what who who are you playing with in that bracket? Um, they got me on the Xbox side, uh the like one of the guys from the league reached out to me and told me to make a team for Xbox, so I'm pulling out of center on Xbox with I'm playing with uh Gilly who played with the Wizards and um yep. Savage Duart that played with the Cavs. Cool, man. And so what what um uh, I haven't been playing since to the Xbox bracket, what what round is that tomorrow? Um, I think it's like uh we'll be matching up against like the the two K League like team. So like we'll probably play against like the Lakers or or play against like the Hawks or somebody. So each team made their own like uh three on three v three team. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm I'm really excited. Mm-hmm. That's cool. What time do y'all play? What what time bracket? Um I they didn't give a specific time yet. They're gonna release uh the brackets here soon, but the whole mm-hmm. tournament starts at eight PM tomorrow. Eight PM Eastern. Got it. Got it, man. That should be a pleasure to watch, man. Tell everybody to tune in and, and see that man. I hope Hope you really uh, go far with that, man. Hopefully pull off a win, man. It would be cool. Oh, yeah, that would be awesome. So, yeah, it would, man. So, like, you know, 
it sounds like, man, esports has opened up a lot of doors for you, man. Like, what are you working on now? You know, season three. You know, what what, what do you have in the works as far as esports and gaming is concerned? Um, right now, I'm planning on starting my um, get my own stream set up. Uh, with the whole COVID situation, it's kind of hard to like shop around for a a good um, PC and then like still be working yeah. as well. Um, I gotta have somebody help me hook this whole thing up. I gotta buy a desk and like lights and stuff. So it's a lot that goes into it. And um, but uh, I plan on making uh, creating my own organization where kind of like how Eyeball has their thing, and I'm I'm, yep. I'm gonna uh, start, start doing my own thing like that and. I got to bring in some guys that, that really knows what they're doing that can, like, help me out and try to build, get, like, a good team going, a, a group of guys to kind of help like, help other uh, help bring other people up and, like, uh, um, help introduce, like, new talent to, like, comp teams or help um, – or comp teams find uh, – or just teams find guys. So I think it's kind of like I'm just trying to make, a, like, a website or an organization to where – um, to build like a family of, of guys from different esports, you can try to do something like Fortnite or or Apex down the road, but starting at 2K and uh, get like streaming done and getting content done, and hopefully be able to get guys who do graphic designs and badge grinding to try to build like an organization, like kind of how Eyeball does it. Uh, I think it's needed, man. I, I tell people all the time, you know, you you don't have, you know, and I'm coming from the from the high school standpoint, man. I got maybe the top five uh, 2K uh, players in the country. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's nothing in place like you're talking about as far as grooming that next generation, man. So I think you're on to something, man. I wish you luck with that one, man. Like, truly. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's needed, man, because, you know, you look at, like, basketball, you know, you have AU and you have all these training camps, but you have nothing on, on the on esports the e and gaming side of things to build those skill sets and, kind of build that person up so they can move to the next level, man. So I think it's awesome, bro. Oh, yeah, for sure. I've seen a few leagues starting to um, – through the works of, like, trying to build some kind of program for, like, guys under 18 to, like, um, do something yeah. like that where it's like kind of like a grassroots thing. Um, yeah. Uh, I think it still needs uh, – it has to go through the ringer of getting more organized and have more eyes on it. Um, so when these guys are turning 18, they could uh, – start playing with uh, Transition some over. of the, uh, the older guys, which is, some guys are doing it now. Like, there's some guys playing with, like, the 2K League players now, but, like, the undiscovered guys, I feel like it needs to be some kind of system in place to, to the rest of the, the rest of the 2K community can get their eyeballs on them without them trying to uh, pick up, like, the crumbs of, like, getting on any team and just playing for anybody and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think it's cool, man. But, I, I yeah, man, I really appreciate Appreciate you coming on the show, man. Blessing the show, and uh, just tell everybody how they can reach out to you, man. Give them your social media. Tell them how they can get in contact with you. Oh yeah, no doubt, man. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, if anybody want to reach out to me, my Twitter at is Yay Not Gaming. That's Y E Y N O T G A M I N G. And um, you also can reach out to me on uh, Instagram, which is Yay Not Official. Um, I just made a TikTok, which is. Yay not official as well, but I might change it to Yay not TikTok. So, um, so hit me up on anything with any uh, questions or suggestions. I'm about to start doing a Periscope every Monday. I'm waiting for a couple things to get done so I can um, give out. I have a big announcement coming up, so I'm just waiting for some small stuff to get done so I can put all that content out and then um, get the ball rolling from there. That's awesome, man. I wish you the best of luck, man. Uh, thanks again for coming on the show, man. Best of luck, Gary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No problem, man. Thanks for having me. All right, man. Peace. Peace. Take care, man. This was another episode of Go Play Esports with Christopher Turner. Follow him on Twitter at Turner underscore CP.